On this week's On.NET, I have my best friend John Miller on talking about how to build Teams apps with .NET and Blazor. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno, and I'm back with another On.NET episode. This time, we're talking about building Teams apps with .NET and specifically Blazor. And I brought on my best friend in the entire world, John Miller. How's it going, John? Hey, James. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. John and I have worked together for about 15,000 years. And John, you've been doing all sorts of stuff here at Microsoft. What have you been working on, and what are you working on today? Um, well, as you know, started with the mobile stuff and was Xamarin, uh, and then worked on Unity, Game Developer Tools, and Visual Studio, and then Visual Studio for Mac. And now I'm building uh, some tools to help Teams developers build with .NET. Very cool. Yeah. All Gambit. That's a beautiful part about .NET that I always talk about is you can build anything. John's been in and all, around all of it, I would say. So I don't think .NET developers maybe really ever heard that they could build Teams apps. And what are Teams apps? And why should I build one, John? Yeah, so um, you know the thing that I hear developers tell me on why is they're already like their business is already kind of running inside of Teams, and they have all of these applications that maybe they've built in the past. And as they're kind of transforming their businesses to be more digital, especially with a lot of hybrid work happening now, uh, they want to bring those things into Teams so people can uh, not transition back and forth between apps, context switch so much, um, make new workflows, uh, and take advantage of the things that Teams can do uh, without having to like jump around everywhere. And, and also make things a little more seamless for users. Very cool. So what are some of the things that you've seen people build for Teams? Like I, I've used the Starbucks app where I buy my team coffee, but you know I use Viva and a few other things. But what are like our actual customers and developers out there building? Yeah. Uh, so the things that I've seen that uh, kind of where developers start is maybe they want to take a workflow that they already do. Um, so one example I'd like to talk about is like a DevOps workflow. Uh, maybe you want to control something in a DevOps environment from Teams with some type of uh, chat command. Maybe that in, works with a bot. Uh, so that's somewhere you can kind of start. Um, you know, maybe that's about getting issues or, or notifying people that, hey, there's some things you need to follow up on um, or some list of uh, sales information that you need to bring into Teams. And you want uh, to notify everyone in Teams and a channel that uh, this is what you need to look at or, you know, there's some new inventory thing going on. So I think that makes a lot of sense as somewhere to start. Um, you can also bring in any any existing web app uh, into Teams. So if you already have a web app and you want to show that in a chat in a channel, you can do that as well. Oh, very cool. Okay, so you said that we can build these apps with .NET. What exactly does that mean? Is there like a SDK or something out there, or how does this work? Yeah. So what what we're building right now is called Teams FX, is Teams framework, and part of that is an extension for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And the Visual Studio extension starts you off with a project template that lets you create a Blazor server app. And it's just an ASP.NET web app, right? It's a Blazor server app. And then a Teams app lets you have a manifest that kind of points to the endpoints of where that app is hosted. And so all of the extension points are hosted experiences. So in this case, we're just building a web app. And you can decide you know, what that looks like, what that does, how, how integrated you want it to be with Teams, or how unintegrated you want it to be. And we, we think the best way to make Teams apps is to integrate them across kind of different extensibility points. So whether you have it in a chat and you have a bot, whether you extend something with messages, um, something inside of a meeting, and kind of combine all those things, I think that's really the power of it. But you can start kind of incrementally and, and go you know, wherever you need to go. That's very cool. So what you're saying is, if you're a Blazor developer, you're a Teams developer too. Yeah, if you're a .NET developer, you're a Teams developer too. That's and really cool. Yeah, because I think already I've been talking a lot about .NET MAUI, which you can build like hybrid applications. So there's kind of this scenario of you know, building across every single platform and then pulling it into Teams. I do like the message and kind of the scenarios you set up because I'm like you. I, I, I hate having to jump around to 25,000 different applications, so much so that I have a bunch of power automation set up to actually notify me inside mm. of teams to go do stuff. So I don't have to like check email or do anything like that. Nice, yeah, exactly. So, you know, the more you can bring into one space, I think that helps you be more productive, helps you collaborate with your colleagues. Um, and then all the information is kind of at your fingertips and you can do that as a .NET developer. And we're, we're building tooling to help you do that. Uh, so you can start with a toolkit, you can create a new app, uh, you can bring it, you know, a, a tab it's called, but really just like you wanna bring a website in or you wanna create a bot. And we're building out 
uh, tooling to help you do that, uh, integrate with single sign-on. And we have a, a .NET SDK that makes the JavaScript experience a little more friendly for Blazor developers. Uh, so you can kind of live out that actual Blazor promise of not using so much JavaScript. Uh, so we're working on that as well. Very cool. Yeah, I love the component based. I love obviously the C Sharp stuff. Uh, John, do you want to show off a little bit? You said there's Visual Studio and VS Code tooling and an SDK. That seems awesome. And there's cool templates. Do you want to give us a little demo of, of how to get started? Yeah, let's jump over to my screen and I will show you how easy it is to get started. Um, so here I have Visual Studio 2022 open and you can just go to create a new project and we have this Teams app template. So you get this template after you install uh, the Teams toolkit. The Teams toolkit is part of the Visual Studio installer. It's an optional component in the ASP.NET workload. So mm -hmm. you can bring up the installer. Uh, if you have the ASP.NET workload installed, then you can select the box for the Microsoft Teams developer tools. So here you have this template. Uh, we can go through this and it's basically a Blazor server template, but you get a special menu here that pops up when you're ready to create the app. And you can choose which extensibility surfaces that you want to add to this application for Teams. And today we have the ability to add a tab or a bot. So these are kind of different areas of Teams that you can extend. Uh, so I've already done this and to save a little time so we don't have to watch uh, the project create. So I already have this running. So I'll jump over to that. Um, on the right here is the project I just created. And I have open um, one component, which is what you're seeing run on the left here, the congratulations thing. Um, and on the left is my Teams app running inside of Teams. So what I did to get this working is, let me uh, expand this a little bit, just show you what we have scaffolded here. So this is my Blazor server app, and we've added some sample code in here. So there's a bunch of components, which are these pieces we see on the left, kind of these different sections that show some sample code of how you can do different things with our SDK. And uh, one of the cool things too, James, is that because this is a Blazor server app, it's .NET 6, um, you know, I can make some code changes and save my file and hot reload just kind of works right inside of Teams. Inside so we... of Teams from right. Visual Studio, just normal debugging and boom, it's there. That's crazy. Right. right. So, and another cool thing is we have debugging all set up and working. So if I go down here and maybe set a breakpoint and uh, if I click this authorize button here, I get prompted um, for my permissions. I'll just accept those over here that my app needs. And then here I've already hit my breakpoint. So I can debug this app just like I would any other Blazor server, you know, .NET app, and uh, you know, it's running inside of Teams. So that makes the inner development group really easy uh, to make Teams apps. Very cool. So you have, if we look at that solution, that looks just like a normal Blazor server application. And then you have components, right? So inside there, what you're showing is that these are just standard Razor components, right? That's right, yep. Yeah, we've included a bit of sample code um, just to uh, show you some different things that you can do. Um, and that includes uh, single sign-on with Teams and how you get the user information. That's how it's getting my name here. Mm. It knows that I'm uh, John Miller. And then when I click that authorize button, it basically gave me some delegated permissions to access Microsoft Graph and get some more information about me, which is my email address, which you see down here. But this is my test tenant. So uh, that's what I'm running. And I'm running inside of a M365 developer tenant. So I have my own admin space to run in Teams. It's separate from like the Microsoft tenant that we have. So I have all the permissions that I need to be able to do this. Um, and that gives me a, um, an easy way to, to kind of develop and do whatever I need to do in here before I'm ready to push it to wherever I actually want to see this. Very cool. And that looks like a Teams app, right? It doesn't look like um, my standard bootstrap at all. Like, and I noticed that in the Razor, there's some stuff in there, right? Is this, so it's more than there's like a whole, is there a UI toolkit basically inside that? Oh, you have a good eye, James. Oh. So something else we've included in the template and uh, let me see if it's here is there's another NuGet package that we have and it is the Fluent UI components. Mm. So Microsoft has shipped a, uh, a package that gives you Blazor components that wrap the Fluent UI web components. So what that allows us to do is do things like Fluent button um, and there's, I think that's the only one I have in here. But if you saw earlier, there's kind of that blue button there. And that's based on what I've specified here. And that gives us things that look a little closer um, to the way Teams is. The styles aren't perfect yet. It's still kind of in progress to make things look as in, uh, you know, as in home for Teams, but it's getting very close. So yes, we do ship that in the template. Um, you can add that or remove that. You can choose whatever you want to do. Uh, we think it's, you know, we recommend users to try and make things feel 
like their native inside team. So the Fluent UI package helps you get closer to that and we'll continue to make that better. That's very cool. So you get kind of this whole scaffolding, you get authorization, you get the Fluent UI that's going to look and feel like Teams. What else are we getting inside this package here? Yeah, so the other thing that you can do is we have some ways for you to provision uh, the Azure resources that are here. So in the beginning, I selected that I had a tab and I had a bot. So that bot is an Azure bot framework bot. Mm. And we can run that locally. And actually, I think I, think I have this bot running here. Yeah, so oh, here it is. So this is the bot that I sent. So here it's running. So I think I have some command. Oh, here they are. There is a welcome command. And so I run that here. I've hit my breakpoint that I set in Visual Studio. So I can debug my bot if I want to. Go ahead and continue that. My bot should respond with a card. So that's something else. This is running locally now. So when I'm ready to put this in Azure, we have just some menu commands now under the project menu. We have Teams Toolkit. We have a couple menu commands here. Um, and so we have these options to provision and deploy uh, these. So we can bring up this dialog here and we can load our Azure subscription. And then I can choose my resource group and kind of uh, provision the resources. And then when I'm ready, deploy them to Azure. Got it. So I can do all of my local debugging, all of my team's development, everything just on my machine. And then when I'm ready, I'm just deploying. And how's it get into my like my team's instance? Like if I was deploying this at Contoso, for example, right? How does it, is it get through through the Azure deployment or is it some other way? Yeah. So what Team Toolkit does for you for the local experience and that's a, that's a step that I didn't show, but we have this menu option to configure the Teams app. So that's oh. a, a prerequisite. The first thing you do, what that does is that does a lot of the configuration between the different portals that's necessary. That's Teams developer portal, um, the Azure Active Directory registration for the app, which every Teams app requires for the SSO. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does all that for you and connects all those pieces for you, which previously was a very tedious process. And then all of those things are, let's see if it's in here. Let me bring it up for you. Show this. Show that over here. Let me let me just drill into it quick so it's not confusing. All of those things are uh, stored inside of. Oh, here you can see it. We have this FX folder. So everything here is stored inside this FX folder, and there's a bunch of configuration files for all the parameters and settings that are needed. And then the Teams Toolkit will register those things for you as part of the app manifest. So every Teams app has a manifest, which is just some JSON schema that says where everything is located. So when you put it to Azure, we'll update the manifest to point to the right Azure URL, uh, and you can go in and tweak those things however you want. You can always go into Teams Developer Portal too and uh, customize all that stuff. Very cool. Now, there are other things inside this project. I saw that there's like you know components and there's bots and things like that. So that's sort of up to you of what you want to build. Um, you said that you know most of the stuff you can do in C Sharp and in Razor UI. Are there times that you kind of have to break out of that mold and and enter the JavaScript world, or like how does how does that work in this in this in this world? Yeah. So uh, the Teams uh, JS SDK is really the way that you interact with the Teams client. So all of that is JavaScript. We've started um, wrapping some of that to make it a little friendlier for JavaScript developers and. As a dependency here, I have this uh, Microsoft Teams FX package. Mm. And that lets me do things like if I, I believe in here, let's see if I'm using it. Yeah, so it gives me like this Teams FX class and the Teams user credential class. These are all typically JavaScript APIs, but now I have a C Sharp way to kind of uh, use these things. Um, so you can see I can log in with my scopes and get the credentials I need for my tokens to be able to do things in the Teams. Um, we also give you a way to get an authenticated Microsoft gra Graph client without having to do all yourself. So we can get the token from our SDK, and then we can authenticate that with Graph. So we can call things, and that's why you saw that authorize button that I pressed earlier. Um, it makes that very smooth. Um, there's still some pieces we include inside the template here for interopt. This is all taking advantage of Blazor's interop classes for JavaScript, mm -hmm. right? And we've just tried to abstract that out into a NuGet package. We'll continue to make that better. Right now, some of it's included in here. So here's a piece uh, that shows you a little bit of how we're doing that. So these are the types of things we'll, we'll slowly move out as we get um, it hardened. We'll slowly move those out and make those easier for you. But for now, we include it there. So you can, you can customize whatever you want to do there for now. That's very cool. So really, this is not just like, here's a UI toolkit. It's actually like an entire framework, hence you know Teams framework, right. where it's giving you not only access to create bots, to create the UI, 
you know, call your backends, but it's also simplifying Teams development via the authorization and the other things that are inside that JavaScript library, but exposing it in C Sharp for C Sharp developers. Uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, we want to make it easy to get started. And uh, Teams Toolkit is the extension that helps you automate a lot of the tedious configuration and kind of gives you some app templates to get started. And then Teams Framework is kind of the bigger piece that includes the libraries and SDKs. And that also works for TypeScript and JavaScript and has extensions for that and SDKs for that as well. And then the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio is the piece that we're focused on for .NET developers. Very cool. So where can people go to get started? Like I am James Montemagno, .NET developer. I'm ready to go create my next amazing Teams app. Where do I go on the internet? Is there like yeah, a, play, so, a place? <laughs> yeah, let me show you this on my screen. Um, so we have an open source repository for this project. It's office dev slash Teams FX. So you can go here. And all of the documentation and links and information about what we're building is available on here. This is also where we track issues. So you can check that out. And then we also have a docs page where you can read about Teams Toolkit. And that's on the Microsoft Docs. And you, there's some getting started information here for both the VS Code extension, the CLI tool, and also for Visual Studio. Very cool. John, this has been amazing. I now know that this thing is there like how to actually get started and explore it? So it sounds like really like the the, the step is install some stuff. You said it's a checkbox in Visual Studio, but then also just kind of start exploring because there's a lot of stuff there in the template, right? Yeah, yeah. The template um, has pretty much all the pieces that we have available today, uh, so that's a good way to kind of uh, poke, you know, twist some knobs and see what you can do, and then you know let us know, uh, you know, what's working and what's not, and we'll make it better. Awesome. Thank you so much, John, for coming on and showing off all this awesome stuff. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, James. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And don't forget that no matter where you're at, there's probably a like button, a subscribe button. You should ding that and ring that and hit that notification bell because you can get notified every single time there's a new episode right here on YouTube or on the Microsoft Docs site. So until next time, this has been another on .net. I'm James, and thanks for watching.